Here's questions that you've probably heard before. I'm just going to throw them out there for you to think about, not necessarily going through the answers, just in the interest of time right now. But you're going to hear tell me about yourself. All right. Now, I try to rephrase it to be a little bit more, more than just a lazy question of tell me about yourself. But walk me through the evolution of your career, sharing key skills or competencies you developed in each position. And what led you to leave from one position to go to the next one? The next one is key. What do you know about our company? If you didn't take the time to research a company that you have an interview for, it's not going to bode favorably when you go, really, I didn't have a chance. Or, you know, I, I looked up your website and you mumble something that shows you really didn't understand anything. Most interviewers will ask you in some way, shape, or form what you do particularly well, what are your strengths, and they'll either call it weaknesses or your opportunities for improvement. Be prepared to answer those questions, and for opportunities for improvement, come up with something that isn't going to immediately disqualify you when you give that answer. Okay, and ideally, it's not something that happened within the last year or two, but it happened five or 10 years ago, and it was a lesson learned, and you've benefited by it, okay? As we talked earlier, any job you have, you're gonna be interacting with coworkers, you're gonna to have to communicate with people, and guess what? We've all worked with difficult people before. Whether they were our boss, our coworker, our direct report, be prepared to tell a story of how you dealt with a difficult person and hopefully there was a positive ending to how you resolved it. The next to last question, that, that's my, my tell me about a time you messed up on the job. I call it professionally stubbed your toe. And what lesson did you learn from it? Because we all made mistakes somewhere along the line. And ideally we learn from our mistakes and we don't make them again, but it tells the recruiter I'm human. I've met, messed up. I've learned from my mistakes. There's a human side to me. Everything isn't gold medals and trophies and blue ribbons, okay? And you will be asked one way, shape, or form, what are your salary expectations? It is illegal to ask your salary or your salary history, but it's legal to ask your salary expectations. And this is one question I will tell you how I recommend answering it. For starters, because you've already done your ideal job exercise, ideally salary isn't the number one criteria in your job search. So you can honestly say compensation is not the number one criteria in my job search. That's your first response. And then a good recruiter will say, I appreciate that, but Millery, you know, it would be helpful if you could share your salary expectations with me to which I would say, I expect to be paid market competitively based on my background and experience, okay? So I still haven't given any numbers, but I've set the tone, not the most important criteria, but I bring value, so I expect to be paid market competitively. And then finally, when they come back and say, it would really be helpful if you could share your salary expectations, I can either give what my last salary was or I can say, I'm looking for a range of X to Y. And depending on what your range is and what they're looking to pay, they might say, what's the bottom end of your range? Don't negotiate against yourself. The bottom end of your range is the bottom number you just gave them. Don't give them a lower number. Because right now, the salary negotiation isn't going to come up till the end of the job search once you have an offer or they're about to make you an offer.